Some say these old mountains are the oldest mountains in the world. The Appalachians are as old as time itself, others say. The change of the seasons reminds me of the passage of time, its long onward march. The forest now laid bare, naked, before being enveloped by winter's cold embrace. No leaves to hide its understory to provide canopy or shade. Tis the time when many folks here remember and celebrate Thanksgiving. Over the long years, numerous people have called these mountains home, from the first peoples, native Indian tribes, to explorers, surveyors and trappers, pioneers, and eventually settlers. In the central to southern Appalachian region, it's been home to our southern highlanders, mountaineers, you may even be tempted to call them hill folk or hillbillies. Regardless, Appalachian Americans call this place home now, and like I said, it's Thanksgiving here. Many people will be reminded of fond memories they shared with loved ones during the holidays, of growing up with large family units to enjoy the festivities and traditions of Thanksgiving Day. Some of those memories will inevitably hold bittersweet recollections of those loved ones who are no longer with us, but their warm smiles, the stories they shared, those will never leave us. In many mountain communities, especially for those growing up in a holler, you would have had the distinct fortune of being surrounded by extended family members who also lived nearby in the holler with you, making for large family gatherings, especially around Thanksgiving. And if a person thinks back on it, I bet they can even recall the old house where everyone gathered together, up at Papa and Mama's house. Now not everyone would have celebrated or kept the exact same traditions on this day. But come Thanksgiving week, back in those now leafless forests, if you listen closely, there's a chase on. A hunt is happening. Some may be running their dogs after rabbits. Others may be taking the children out to hunt up some squirrels. Still yet others may be looking to harvest a wild turkey to grace their dinner table with. Such rich memories have been made around the family traditions here in Appalachia that some have been privileged to enjoy. There's a good bit of work involved undergirding this Appalachian lifestyle. Many of the tools or implements needed to be self-reliant had to be manufactured with much skill by a blacksmith. Just about every mountain farm had a forge and an anvil to do the work necessary to make everything they needed from potholders to hooks used to hang hogs. You see, as long as temperatures were cool enough, it was very common around Thanksgiving time of year, and still is in some places across Appalachia, to butcher a hog. Before the rise of grocery stores, it was a necessity, really, to raise hogs in the woods, largely on the once abundant American chestnut tree, which tragically has now gone extinct. Hogs are such hardy critters and can put on weight easily, and relatively quickly, compared to a much larger and slower growing beef cow, they're also versatile in the products you can derive from them, including lard. Yes, hog butchering has been an Appalachian Thanksgiving tradition for many, going back generations. It would bring neighbors and family together to process the animals, from skinning or shaving them, some would boil them to do this, to quartering and smoking the meat, to ultimately having a nice Thanksgiving ham to grace the table. Now usually while the men were out hunting or processing hogs, the women would spend a good bit of the week preparing for the centerpiece of that week, the Thanksgiving meal. Laboring for hours over the most guarded recipes ensuring that every morsel was prepared with the utmost attention to Granny's details, as well as full of love and warmth. Speaking of warmth, a lot of cooking has been done over wood stoves such as these right here. A very common one you may recall was the Mealmaster cooktop stove. And oh how these things would heat up a room, even the house. It wasn't as simple then to plug in an electric stove and set the temperature. No, the stove fire had to be tended. Enough wood had to be split, dried and stacked, and at hand to keep the fire burning. <laughs> when I say this lifestyle was undergirded by a good bit of work, I wasn't kidding. Splitting firewood was nearly a year-round chore to keep the house warm and the kitchen open. 
and then there was all the mess tracked in and the ashes that had to be kept swept up to keep a clean house. In Appalachia, it's not uncommon for most to keep a garden either. Much of the food harvested in the late fall can be stored over winter, and some of the bounty is prepared for the Thanksgiving meal, including fresh root crops like potatoes and yams, to beans and greens, to a whole variety of vegetables, buttery warm biscuits, and an assortment of mouth-watering meats, the crowning achievement being the plump Thanksgiving turkey full of the tastiest stuffing you can imagine. Oh, the fond memories of being together with family at Thanksgiving, the games the children would play, the delicious meals and aromas wafting through the air prepared with love by the women we love more than any other in the world. And the unforgettable stories Pappy could sit and tell for hours. What a real Appalachian storyteller he was. If you look at it this way, gratitude helps us to see what's there, what we have, not what's missing. Even if it's a loved one no longer with us, we can cherish the time and the memories we had with them. By the industrialized world's standards, they may look upon Appalachia and the people and the traditions here as poor, or point to things Appalachians don't have, but I think they'd be wrong. If you ask an Appalachian they got to grow up remotely similar to this, enjoying the love and warmth of family, shared meals from food they likely grew and toiled over themselves, yet were rewarded with a Thanksgiving feast. I think they'd tell you they had more than enough, and that's something the world needs more of. I'm Josh, and I hope you enjoyed this special Thanksgiving episode in my Exploring Appalachia series. I wish you and yours a very happy Thanksgiving from right here in Appalachia. Enjoy some time with those you love, and I'll see you again in another episode.